Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about states using the Limbo AI GD extension plugin. I was going to combine behavior trees, but this content got so big, I decided to split it in half and keep the behavioral tree for a second video. Today, you're going to see how we have got our character here with an idle state, and this will shift as we do things. So if I rotate, you'll see that he's moving, and then I can pick up this axe, and then as I add the attack button, you'll see the attack in the corner there. Pretty awesome. We're going to talk about states and how to transition between them and try to make our lives a little bit easier. All right, let's dive right in. To install Limbo AI, all you have to do is go to the asset lib. Let's type in Limbo and you'll see it pop up here. Now, although it says Limbo AI, don't be confused with like ChatGPT or any LLM. This is AI as in classic uh, NPC behavioral AI and state machines, as it says here in the title. So all you have to do, click this download button click install. You should get the asset. Uh, Limbo AI has been installed successfully. Click OK. You also notice that you have a demo folder and, an add and inside your add-ons folder is your Limbo AI. So this was built in C++ and it's a GD extension. It doesn't support mobile, but it supports everything else, which is awesome. And another curious thing will be when you normally go to project, project settings, and go to your plugins, it's not there, but it is enabled. It's in the way that this plugin being a GD extension is installed. That doesn't really conform to the standard plugin enablement that other add-ons have. All right, with that, let's get started. Now, let me set the scene. I'm obviously not starting from an empty project. And that's because generally, when you start having issues with state, it's not at the beginning of the project. It's while you're working on things and then you start adding more and more that it starts becoming a problem. So first I figure I would go through and kind of show you what we have here. It's a simple map with a player who's just a character body 2D. We have an animation player that has different animations for his movements and it just animates these don't worry if you've ever touched the animation player i will cover it in the future it's got an area 2d for hitbox it's got a camera it's got a little axe and he's hidden i've dealt with like all the things where you need to pick up the axe you just basically have the player go over it and it just makes it from hidden to visible and then there is an animated sprite 2d which is a frame for every state and so whenever you see a state equals some number, it's referring to these frames here to kind of just show what state we're currently in. Other than that, if we go looking at the code, it's a fairly simple implementation. Most of the time when you have a project going, you're kind of just throwing everything together. And so here we've got the physics process. We have the get action for up and down for your direction Y. And in here we're gonna have it rotate with the left and right. So this way you can rotate the character to move it forward and back and after their movement you can go in the direction it's rotated based on the velocity and down here with the move and slide he moves here I'll show you real quick if I move the left and right keys we see that he rotates and if I use the up and down keys he moves forward and backwards standard move and slide stuff but to kind of show it there and then we have in these here are conditionals that kind of mimic state this is generally what we do we kind of just throw in and say hey if my velocity is zero and i'm not rotating just play the idle animation and set that frame to one which will be idle if our velocity is not zero and we are rotating, make the animation play move, set the frame to two, and in this case, rotate if we're rotating, move and slide so that we know if we need to move the character. And this camera rotation is just so that the idle image in the top corner doesn't get in this like weird upside down state as you rotate. So this is just so we can read the state. Other than that, we have started an attack state, which allows us to really pick up the ax, click the mouse button and do an attack, but it's not complete and I will show that in a moment. And technically a death state uh, if we are hit in the box. I tried to keep this simple so that we can then kind of see what side effects happen as we add more and more state related code that doesn't have any confines keeping it uh, from interacting with others. This project will also be on my GitHub, which will be linked in the description below. Now, I told you a moment ago how there was an issue with the attack, or at least we started the attack, but it wasn't really finished. From first glance, it actually kind of looks like it's complete. We have an attack action, which is when we click the space bar or mouse button, our axe is visible, we should play the animation, and we should set our frame to three, which is the attack frame, which should show up in the corner. But if we go and hit play here, go and pick up our axe, and now we'll click the mouse button, 
kind of hard to tell maybe at first or space bar you can kind of see that stuttering that's happening and that's because the idle animation is like restarting and replaying but the attack animation is not actually executing even though you can kind of see that it's trying well this is part of that side effect we are creating a state that's bumping up against other rules and conditions we've created for another state in this case the idle state because technically as we're attacking we're not rotating and we are not moving and so now the rules of idle are clashing with the rules of attack technically we could try to fix this by adding another condition like if the animation player is playing and animation player dot current animation is the attack we could just tell it to return and then tell it to like skip the rest of this so we'll rotate go pick up our axe and now let's go ahead and click that same mouse button again look at that it works which we should be happy however we have now added more complication we are now exiting early so now we want to add more things we have to decide if it needs to be before the attack or if it should be doing after the attack and which things can have priority over what and now you have to keep track of all your different state logic and conditions and try to make sure that they don't clobber each other and luckily this is where the limbo ai state features allow us to separate these states keep them contained and not interact with each other and it doesn't matter how you set the conditions they won't interfere with each other and then you can have them run on their own so then let's try to go ahead and migrate away from all of this conditional code in the physics process into a state architecture design pattern in order to transform our conditionals into proper state we need to create and initialize the state machine to do that let's go ahead and create our variable hsm and you can find it under limbo hsm let's go ahead and create a ready function go ahead and create init state machine as a function come on down here and create the function We'll go ahead and say hsm equals limbo hsm dot new and instantiate it then we need to add it to the scene so this becomes a child of player so we'll say add child hsm in order to actually use the state machine we also need to initialize it so then we need to say hsm dot initialize self set it as active now we have the state machine added to our node and we can begin adding new states. So now the fun gets to begin. We're going to find the idle state first and then the move state. So we're going to go into this state machine, create a couple of new lines there, create a var, we're going to go with idle state and we're going to create, use the limbo state class, say new dot named. So you can now name the state and here we'll call it idle. Big surprise there I know. We're going to use this method that is called call on enter now it wants you to define a function you can do it in line and create a function that's inside or you can reference a function in your node the best way to think about what a call on enter is is the same way that a ready function is on a standard node object so it's really just the ready function of the state so we can be kind of clever and we can just call it idle ready and then come underneath your ready function over here and let's just call it idle ready and for now we'll just make it pass because just to make sure things are compiling as we go and it's happy and then it wants a call on update right recommend you to do this and call on update is basically the update loop well the update loop on states run on the physics process update loop so it's the same as physics process we're going to do the same thing we did with the ready function let's call this let's call this idle physics process and then go underneath the physics process here create this function and room colons and add the delta here and for now, we'll do pass as well. And you can see that they're very, very similar. They, they're basically the same thing. This is just for the idle state. And so when it's active, it'll run this loop, this update loop. Okay. Let's do the same for move. Var move state equals limbo state dot new named. Call it move. And we're going to do the same thing. Call on enter. We're going to call it move ready. Create this function. Come back down. We'll do a call on update, call it move physics process. You could just call it move update, like the name really doesn't matter. I'm just trying to drive home that it runs on the physics process uh, loop. 
Delta float pass. Well, now that we've defined them, we still need to do a couple of things. We still need to add them to the scene, idle state, and then let's add the move state. Also, if you do not define a initial state for your state machine, it'll pick the first child that you add. So technically, if I didn't add it, it would do idle state, which is what we want, but it's good to be explicit about what you're wanting it to do. Initial state equals the idle state. State machines need to know how they are allowed to transition to each other. Like what is the trigger that says, hey, this means I should now move into an idle state or I should move to a move state or move out of those states. Well, there's a system called an add transition. You can do the state management to, to do that. Here, we'll go add transition. You can go from the idle state to the move state. And the string that we're using to say that this event that causes that event is move started. So this means that when we're in the idle state, we can dispatch a transition and say, hey, the move has started and it'll go from the idle state to the move state if this event is sent out. Conversely, we want to be able to end moving state, just M, add transition, move state, idle state. And here, move ended. And the reason I chose these was thinking about our conditionals. Our move has started when our velocity is not zero and our rotation is not zero. And our move has ended when our velocity is zero and our rotation is zero. So I'm just trying to create a string representation of an event that represents that conditional. We can go one step further because sometimes we don't actually move to a state, but we really don't care that the start, what the starting state is. You just want to be able to move to a state. In this case, I would love to be able to move to an idle state no matter what state I'm in, whether I'm in attack or some other state. I want idle state to be like my resting state when I finish an action. HSM, add transition, HSM dot any state, meaning I don't care what the state is. It can be any state and I can move to the idle state and I'll just give it the event that a state has ended. That's not all well and good. We haven't actually accomplished anything other than creating these state definitions. Now we need to get logical and move these conditionals out of the regular physics process and into these other functions. So the first thing we should do is we know that we're starting in the idle state first. And so when the idle starts, it's going to play the ready function. So when we look here, we can already see that this here play the idle animation and put us in frame one those kind of feel like ready states. Once it plays once, I really don't need to worry about it playing again. In fact, we already have the animation player playing on a loop. So we're just wasting cycles telling it to restart like we are here anyway. So we can actually take this logic and move it up into the idle ready. Now you might be tempted to try to move this condition into your physics process, but really what we want to do is have this process detect when we want to move out of the idle state and dispatch an event to tell us to move to a move state. Where this condition says, I want to stay in idle, that doesn't really belong there. In fact, it's this movement state where we want to know when our velocity is not zero and our rotation is also not zero. Let's go ahead and take this and actually move this into the physics process in idle. Once we do that, we need to tell the state machine that we want to move from the idle state into the move state. HSM dot dispatch, and we put in the string we created, which is move started. If we're in the idle state and we move, meaning this velocity has changed because we're pressing these buttons for rotating left and right, velocity is now changed or our rotation has changed, we should tell the state manager we have moved. Right, well, we're almost ready to run this. We just have a little bit of cleanup, mainly the remnants of the movement and the idle state. This movement state code here looks exactly like the code we moved for the idle state on its ready. So why don't we go ahead and move this to the move ready? When we look at this if condition for the idle, this is what we want the move state to let us know when we're no longer moving to get us back into the idle state. So then we can take this condition, go to the physics process, and then dispatch the event to say that the move has ended. Now, what do we do with the rest of the movement code? Well, it can be in a physics process, but it doesn't have to be this one. We can move it above this logic here and it acts like it was before, but now it is contained within the move physics process update. Meaning when we're in a different state, this won't run and it won't collide with any other states. We should now be able to run it and see if our code works. Okay, so far looking good. We are playing our idle animation. We have the idle state. If we rotate, 
back and forth. We are showing the move state. We can hit the arrow keys and we can move around. And look at that, we have transition states. We didn't change any of the logic for the axe, so we can still pick it up because it's still using that same collision box. Nothing has changed there, so your code could still be used that you've written before. Granted, when we try to attack, we got the animation to play, but notice that we are now frozen in the attack state. That's because we haven't finished moving the attack state over. We'll do that next. All right, we're almost done with this. We just have to finish the attack state. Let's start by defining it like we've done the others. So we're going to create the attack state. All that fun with the limbo state, new, name it. We'll do the on ready, attack ready. All on update, aka the attack physics, physics process. Let's go ahead and create the function. That's for now, come down here, attack physics process. Here's our other process for our move and idle. We'll go ahead and write function attack to float. Pass that. Okay. You might be catching on of a theme here. So here's the unhandled input where we call the action. We can probably move this to the ready state like we've moved all the other ones. Excellent. Clean up that. We don't need that anymore. We still need to be able to call the event. So we actually do care about this still. We could just do what we've done with the other ones and say that we want to call the state. Ah, to call the state, we need to be able to transition to it. So we created the attack. We didn't create the transition and we need to add it as a child. Let's make sure we do that. So add child. Really easy to forget these things. Attack state. Let's go ahead and add transition. And I think we should be able to attack whether we're idle or moving. I think it should be able to do both. Let's go ahead with any state. Attack state. Uh, and let's just say attack started. There we go. Now we can come back here to the input and say HSM dispatch attack started. So now by clicking the mouse button, that is our trigger to go into the attack state. And so now we need to do the other half of this, which is saying when the attack is complete, we need to then exit the attack state, go back to idle. See what we have here. Previously, we checked if we were playing and if we are doing the attack animation. This is to see if we're currently playing meaning it's active. We want to know when we're done. The easiest way for us is to take the animation player and check to see if it doesn't equal the attack for the current animation. This works because the animation player resets to null when an, a one-off, meaning a animation that doesn't loop, is done playing. And you can see that when I go to the attack here and then watch this top corner here, which is current animation, it'll say attack and then it'll disappear. Notice that it's no longer there. So then we can use this as our logic gate. So let's just get rid of this logic entirely. Come down to the attack physics process. And then we'll just say if animation player dot current animation doesn't equal attack, since it will be null, that means we're done playing. We can then just say hsm dot dispatch state ended allowing us to go from whatever state we want using that any state, in this case, the attack state, back to the idle state. All right, let's see if we did this first try. Let's pick up our ax and let's attack. Look at that. We can attack, we go back to idle, we can move. And we are good. And I think that just about wraps it up. Thank you for watching and I hope this has helped you. There will be a part two on the behavior trees. Stay awesome.